Oh, we're making progress. Welcome to the 20th video in the Marine Invertebrate Biology course, and this is the first video of the phylum Mollusca. So we're starting a new phylum, and let's have a look at some of what they look like. I have seen these things and not known what they are, but they are uh, something called a chitin, which is a type of mollusk, a little like a pala, but with eight plates. And very common, very, very common in the intertidal area and just subsurface. Turn over a rock next time you're diving in uh, five meters, and I'd be surprised if you didn't see a, a couple of chitin. Uh, Pawa, very familiar with those. And limpets, you'll be very familiar with these. But the classic snail shape is a mollusk as well. These are Nerita. And man, they could get beautiful. This is a beaded top shell, but a tropical version. We have ones without shells, slugs. This one is called a nudibranch, but this is also a mollusk. Nudibranchs are incredibly colorful and a photographer's favorite. Sea hares, they get their name from the projections that look a bit like rabbit ears off of the front of them. Uh, they're a bit bigger than, uh, than nudibranchs, but also shellless. And normally we think of octopus and the like as exuding ink. But these ones also can put out ink clouds to, uh, to deter predators. Tusk shells are something that most people probably wouldn't be familiar with, but they can be very abundant in um, intertidal areas like uh, like mud flats. And uh, Mary used to make these into necklaces and other jewelry. Our bivalves, this is a scallop. One of the things that we love to eat, these bivalves relative to the skull. It's called a flame file shell and the mantle projections are huge. Here's something that is good for New Zealand's economy, a bivalve which is also a mollusk and uh, maybe something that you'll be interested in, in making a career in which is farming mussels. And then we get into the cephalopods or the octopus and squid and nautilus and uh, some amazing creatures, very smart. We've seen a few types of mollusks now. Let's look at some of their uh, shared characteristics for the whole phylum mollusca. Number one, they start with the ventrally located muscular foot. And if you remember what ventral is, it's like your tummy compared to dorsal, which is your back. The muscular foot, like uh, this looks very similar to a pala. This is probably a uh, limpet though, but the foot is the part that um, we tend to eat Often, uh, the foot is the big, uh, biggest part of the power if you've ever had one. So they move around on their foot and covering that uh, is something called the mantle, which is like a fold of uh, tissue that covers the rest of the body. And it also secretes the shell. So some Mollusks have a shell and some don't, but if they do have a shell, it is secreted by the mantle. And finally, they have something called a visceral mass, which you can think of as just a bag of guts. So if we look at how the general shape of a mollusk goes, let's take a snail. You have the foot that um, that it crawls along on. And then you have a visceral mask or a bag of guts on top of that. And then we'll change color just to make it a little easier to see. Then you have something like a blanket that covers the, the body, goes over the top. And that blanket, so put some lines in. This whole thing that blankets the, the rest of the body and secretes the shell is called the mantle. And they are bilaterally symmetrical. One of the most interesting things about mollusks is their shells. People spend law, lots of time and money collecting shells from all around the world. And if they do have a shell, not all do, then it will be composed of three layers. 
first one is the periostracum, which is kind of like a fingernail material, but it can be, it can have a hairy surface, which can help it give grip or keep it, um, things from settling on it. Uh, if it's grip, grip, it might be grip into the sand or something like this clamshell. And that is a thin organic layer of, of conchiolin or chitin. And then next is the prismatic layer. So if a shell has a lot of color, then often the prismatic layer is responsible. Like um, in Pawa, often the color of a Pawa and the, the variation in color in a Pawa comes down to what it has been eating. And so this is uh, calcium carbonate uh, and in a particular form called aragonite, just learned calcium carbonate. And also there are other chemicals that are and compounds that are mixed in. So that's why you get different colors within the prismatic layer if they're colored. And then finally, the nacreous layer, sometimes called, sometimes called mother of pearl, and that is a different uh, pattern of crystalline structure within the, of calcium carbonate. And that is what gives a shell its luster. So this is what covers a, an oyster. Now, many mollusks, except for the bivalves, which are filter feeders, like clams and the like, most all of the rest of them have something called a radula. So it's uh, quite an amazing structure. It's a ribbon of teeth that is much like sharks where they can replace their teeth. This one is constantly regenerates. All of these little um, projections, these little teeth, essentially scrape along whatever the food is and scrape little bits of it off. It's like a cheese grater. It's like instead of if you had uh, a teeth in your mouth to chew things, you just had something like a cheese grater that grated little bits into your mouth so you could swallow them. Here is a picture of a radula in a snail shell or a snail mouth. And here is one, a micrograph of one taken out of the uh, animal. And you can see how many little teeth there are for scraping and also where it is being replaced. This is the ribbon. Now this little air bit right here is something like this. It's a little hard structure that, the, uh, that can be pressed against the food. And so that ribbon of teeth is held down against the food when it scrapes it. Here is the radula from the beak-like mouth of a cuttlefish or an octopus or a squid, a cephalopod anyway. And you can see the radula here. We will actually dissect that radula out of a squid if we get a chance to in lab. At this point, I would recommend that you sort of stop the, this video and go to the links on Moodle and check out some of the live action shots of the radula. Or you can wait till the end of this video, which will not be very far away. Again, we're going up in complexity within the phyla. And we see something now, we have these chambered hearts, the ventricles and auricles. So the circulation, uh, as we've seen in annelid worms, the modular uh, segments that have hearts as well, but these ones are chambered hearts. So getting a little bit closer to what our hearts are like. And they also have a kidney system, so they can filter wastes out and take out the wheeze. Uh, interestingly, instead of um, iron, like we have hemoglobin, these ones have hemocyanin, which is a, a copper, which is not as efficient as iron in, iron in carrying oxygen. But um, in most of the sedentary mollusks, it's efficient enough. And that actually gives them blue blood. So if you uh, see a mollusk bleed, it actually it bleeds blue underwater. And also you can taste a sort of a copper taste in uh, some of the mollusks if you, um, when they're very fresh.
And the last slide for this video, we're going to look at the taxonomy that you'll be for which you'll be responsible in this class. So we're not really going to be looking at monoplacophora because you're probably not going to see them, or a placophora, but uh, polyplacophora, poly meaning uh, many, and then placo plates. So chitons, many plates. Uh, we'll look at the gastropods, which are the snails, both shelled and shell shellless. Bivalves are have two shells, mussels, clams, oysters. Scaphopods, which are tusk shells, uh, very abundant on the west coast, especially in the harbors like uh, Raglan or Kapia. Uh, and cephalopods, which are the more active hunting ones, the beautiful nautilus, cuttlefish, squid, octopus. Okay, that is it for the first video. Uh, we'll see you in the next one.